Okay, guys, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of an intro to iMovie. Uh, that's kind of one of the things we would have gone over last night in class. But uh, if you've ever seen it um, before or if you've ever used it on any of these Macs, whenever you open it, it opens up to your last project. Um, obviously, you have to be on the same computer every time uh, as it saves all your information to that computer. So um, if you haven't opened it before, I'm just going to go back to projects. Um, you might just get an opening screen that looks like this, but yours might not have anything in it like mine. And you can just cl uh, click on create new. When you click on that, it gives you two options. So there's either a movie and actually the movie is what we'll be using for the most part. The trailers are awesome for using it with uh, like high school students because it gives you a really well laid out template as far as kind of stories you can make with them. Um, it's really kind of interactive and engaging. I find this works really well with um, little projects and it gives you a preview it also tells you what time how long it is uh, let's just take a look at I've used this one a few times it'll show you so it has um, audio built in and obviously you would replace those clips so let's say I'm happy with this one I want to use that one I'll just hit create and it gives us the placeholders. Um, so the outline, this is where you can actually put in your title and actually when you change this, it changes it on the screen here. So I can just put like Mark's story spy ETAD. So it's, it has its own font and literally you just fill in these things. The storyboard, it'll tell you kind of how things are laid out. And so it tells you what type of shot you're looking for, medium, medium. And this is the text that goes in between. Obviously you can hear there's audio as well. It also gives you a shot clip, uh, a shot list so that you know what you need. So you need action, you need four action clips varying uh, between 1.5 or 1.1 and two seconds long, some close-ups. So this is really well laid out for student projects. But again, this is not what we're gonna be doing um, for ours. And again, it wants to save any everything. So I'm just gonna hit cancel there. Oh. <clears throat> Go back to my create new, and this time obviously movie. So movie has a lot less going on. It basically just has um, your media, these are going to be very important. So media, audio, titles, backgrounds, transitions. So some of these uh, you may have seen before. Um, it's as easy as literally just selecting it. You can kind of scrub once you click on it. You can move your cursor over and it'll show you exactly what it's doing. But let's say I want to start off with a globe intro or a, an educational map. I can literally just drag and drop it but that's an, I don't want to do San Francisco so what we can do is it'll actually change it for us so Saskatoon let's try that done so Saskatoon to um, let's say Berlin so love Berlin awesome and then we hit play sorry So it, it's an easy way to really customize things really quickly. Um, on old programs, that used to take a lot of effort to do. Um, so again, you could use some of those. Not everyone operates exactly how that one did. For example, I'll just bring this one down. Um, this one. It just zooms in and out. So it's, it's a still. But let's say we wanted our title to be in there. So let's say I want to start off with just this curtain and you can see the curtain kind of has an animation to it or it should yeah there you go so if this is a little choppy don't worry because it's actually like rendering in the background so it's kind of writing our video in the background and click on titles and I'm just gonna pause this hitting the space bar will play or, or pause um, depending on what your ideas are obviously for like a title um, you can choose pretty much anything that works for you. 
Um, again, if you scrub over it, like some do different things. Like you can see that one kind of builds out. This one kind of pops. It really depends on what you're going for. I've used this one a lot for other projects I've worked on. You can just literally drag and drop and then it gives you all the edit fields right here. So I can just type in mark, go bay, oops, there we go. And I can even change the font if I wanted to, I can change if it were centered, um, but obviously lots of those things are built so that you just jump in and edit it right away. And if we look at that, perfect. So that could be an option for you adding your titles. Let's say, okay, we're done with adding in like backgrounds, those sort of things. Uh, we can jump into my media and anything you have in your iMovie library, old stuff you'll have access to. But uh, let's say nothing is there. You have to import some media. So what you could do is this little button up here it will add, it'll ask to import. So if you have some on like your desktop, um, you kind of go through here, users, you might have to look for your name and desktop. Um, that's where I would find some of mine. Uh, if you have like your iPhone plugged in, I'm not 100% sure if it'll recognize your device plugged in. Um, you could record off the camera, uh, the front facing camera see and probably yeah there we go so you can record yourself doing like a screen capture things like that um, I don't need that obviously I'm just gonna close that out um, but let's say you've imported clips I think you can also just drag and drop a clip um, I'm gonna try that right now so I just grabbed one off my desktop and dragged and dropped so that might be the easiest um, way to do it if you have your clips on your desktop I've literally just clicked it and dragged it and dropped it over. Um, it should just automatically pop up as a movie. You can scrub over it if you like. Um, but if it doesn't, it, it's probably a file type problem. Uh, generally, if you're working with any video type file, it should know how to convert it. But uh, now I'll just kind of show you how to bring in those clips to the timeline. So the way I kind of view this and, and teach this to students is um, here's the location where you can find things. For example, finding your photos, um, finding videos, things like that. But again, with the drag and drop function, super, super easy now. Um, and then pretty much this is kind of the, the files that you're working on. So I'm going to pretend I'm actually going to be working on this file. And let's say that this is one of my shots. Um, that I want for my my project so if you click on it you'll notice that it all goes yellow it thinks that you want the whole clip so that might be great if I want the whole clip I can just drag and drop it and let's pretend I just realized I didn't want that so I'm just gonna delete that click on it again you can see these two little handles you can trim that clip down to be the exact spots you want. So you can see there it goes kind of slow-mo on the right hand side. The viewer right here is kind of what you're looking at. So I was able to use that viewer to trim down this clip and just drag and drop it. That uh, really, anytime I scrub over, you can hear the audio in the background. So that is the audio bar you just saw me play with. Uh, it's just kind of annoying right now in this video, so I turned it down. I had some music to this track. Um, if you have some clips where you don't want the audio, maybe yours is a silent picture and you want to add audio over top of it later, um, you'll just see that represented in all of this little line. You, you can see all the different waveforms, all the different little audio peaks. And again, scrubbing over it will allow you to hear it as well. So let's just play that as I have it right now. So it looks a little choppy just because it's not rendered. It's not a final video, so don't worry about that. Um, clicking on this, 
will allow you to see more or less of it in a timeline. So sometimes if you have a lot of clips, you might want to move this so each clip is a little bit smaller. I find if you go too small, it's sometimes hard to line things up properly. Um, and again, this slider just kind of moves you in the right spot. Um, a transition. Transitions for this project are not necessary, but uh, generally whenever you're making a video, you can add them in. Um, I find sometimes they're overused, but uh, something like this. A trans <coughs> excuse me. A transition just basically goes in between clips to make um, it'll kind of give you one of these effects. So this is a cross dissolve. You can see how it kind of faded in there. Um, here's more of a hokey one that I really hate. Boom. Okay. Kids love them, totally okay. Once you get into the 476 class, we will probably never ever use most of these. Uh, for for the most part, some of them are great. Fade to black, I typically end on a fade to black. See that, just like that, and then you put your credits. Um, you don't need them for this project, but again, that could be something extra you add in to try to get the best marks possible. But now let's talk about uh, titles over clips. So the key part of this assignment was to have a shot type and title it. So I find like subtitles or something like that, it really could be anyone you want, but I find something like a subtitle is less distracting. So let's say I want it right at the start of my clip and right there, text here. So I can just type in um, whatever. Oops. What happened there? Again, Command Z to undo anything. Uh, let's just write close up shot. Again, I can change it. I can change the. Like, sometimes if you have like a white background, you might want to have a different color font. Oh, you have to highlight it first, I think. Highlight it, and then. Oh, hit enter. Oh, I thought that generally changed that. Let's try that again. Or I'll change the font first. There we go. So you can change that. Um, and then you can also see some things up here. So we'll just go through this menu now. Again, for the most part, you shouldn't need to touch most of this, but uh, if you're interested, there are some things that I can do. Um, once your video is done, this, again, you can have, hover over or something, and it will kind of uh, tell you exactly what it does. So automatically improve the video and audio quality. So if you have it selected, just click on that, and it's gonna do some color correction. Um, sometimes it could actually make it look worse. And if I didn't want that, like if I wasn't happy with how that looked, I can hit Command Z and you'll see it changes back. I'll just leave it for now. Um, these are actually the options. Match color, white balance, etc. I don't really need to worry about that. This, I can play, I love playing around with some of these because you can change the look of the video pretty drastically depending on what you're doing. You could desaturate, which is basically taking the color away with just sliding that over. And so if I've done that right there and just hit enter, it does that to my whole clip. Not the whole video, just the clip. Because it works with one clip at a time. So that could be dramatic. You could take away some of the color. You can adjust the colors, make it a little warmer or colder. Color temperature affects like emotional states, so um, you'll notice in a lot of videos um, that are very dramatic it'll be a lot of light like really bright whites and, and blues and nothing red or orange um, uh, let's see some crop you can crop uh, cropping basically kind of would zoom in Ken Burns is kind of a cool effect so it starts at one area and ends at another and so if you have this one should be, you can kind of see it very gradually zooming in. 
So that's a Ken Burns effect. A Ken Burns effect is very popular for still images. Um, if I wanted to make it like super, super drastic, I could change that starting and end point. Let's say that's perfect. I want to play that clip. You might just have to move your playhead back hit end, or space bar. Again, it looks a little choppier right now just because it's not like fully rendered. It, it's kind of just trying to give us the best representation of this video as it can. The better your computer, the better this will be. So that Ken Burns, you can see how it zooms in. I'm just going to reset it. Um, doesn't work for mine. If you have really shaky camera footage, this is actually an automatic stabilization. So it kind of crops it down a little bit, but it removes camera shake. So this is really good if you're filming um, with your hands and you find it's a little shaky. First it analyzes it and then it kind of corrects it. So you can play around with that um, and you can also adjust this. Um, play with it a little bit just to kind of get a feel for what it does. I'm going to move on. Audio. If your clip has really high audio you can auto do it or you can adjust it here you can lower the volume background noise is awesome so if you're in a class like I'm right now as you saw I'm recording on a microphone uh, but if you're recording from the camera on your computer sometimes you'll get the hum of like the lights you'll get fans in the background by clicking this it will actually get rid of that background audio it's it is amazing um, I definitely would suggest trying this. Uh, this is another thing where I wouldn't necessarily know in your video because typically the best videos you should never hear anything like that. But uh, that's where if you write in your blog, here's the steps I've done. Um, I did way more than just throwing a title into my, uh, my clip. The speed, you can speed it up. So you can go super fast, you can go slow. Let's make this clip fast so you can see there it just made it a fast clip but uh, I right now if I go back to it I can go two times four times or even 20 times or you can do a custom so if you want it like 400% awesome so watch it'll go super quick you can see what it does to the audio though so that's something where you probably want to pull that audio all the way down so you don't even see it at all. The next one, clip filter. Generally, you don't need to do any clip filtering. That's kind of with audio. Um, and then information, you don't need to touch that at all. So if we are happy with that, that's great. I'm just going to turn that back off, go normal. You can see it bumps it out a little bit more in my timeline. And we have our title we should be able to stretch that out to the whole clip. And it makes sense that your title would be on the whole clip. And again, how I did that was if I just moved kind of right over this title and you can see you get that like uh, dual arrow and you can drag it. And perfect. Let's go to my media again. There's just literally a still image. Let's say, pretend that's a video clip and it doesn't discern like what's the difference. Um, it, it's actually now applying that Ken Burns effect to kind of make it look like a video um, where it starts in one. So you can see there how it starts at one and goes to the other. Uh, it did that automatically because it was still image. Uh, again, yours should all be video, but you can kind of get a sense of what it's doing. Let's pretend that there is a video though. And I don't care if you'd like to try multiple different titles, whatever works for you, um, whatever you find looks the best. I'm going to lengthen it to the proper size. Okay. And text title there, I'll just say Ken Burns effect. This is where you'd be titling your shots, uh, whichever ones you did. Uh, sh close, medium, follow, dolly, zoom, uh, anything. Okay, and again, you can put a transition between that. I think it has fade to black right now, if I remember correctly. 
if I wanted something else, I could literally just drag and drop it. And it should do it. No, it's still that fade to black. You might have to click on it, delete it, and drag a new one in. So see that. So there you go. Ken Burns. Perfect, so literally those are all the steps you need. Um, a little bit about audio. It does have some built-in, uh, if you have any music in iTunes, you can use that, but um, some of the effects, if, it, if you can find them, are awesome to use. Um, so if you see, there should be kind of this little uh, a file menu. If you click drop down, um, depending, you should have something in here. I probably have more just because I have different programs with Apple and it kind of links them all together. Um, but you should be able to find something. Uh, you can even search and I would actually suggest searching. Try like searching for one called like neon and it might pop up. And so you might want to just drag that. Okay, let's see. That's really loud. I'm going to pull the audio off that one. And let's start at the beginning. And what I can do, if I want it to fade in, there's that little node in there that I can just drag. And at the end as well. And that actually will fade it in and out. So let's go back to the start and I'll just play it. You'll hear it fade in. So again, your, your video doesn't need audio per se. That's kind of another extra if you'd like to do it that way. Um, I'm just going to click off that so you can see some of the other ones. Um, again, you can just hit play to, to test them out. Uh, these are actually some of the Apple ones that Apple uses in Apple commercials, and they're all free to use. Everything's copyright free. Um, if you grabbed iTunes, like a song you have in iTunes, and try to play it, uh, if you upload it to YouTube, it'll probably get kicked off for copyright infringement. So for this purpose, we're actually not going to use anything copyright uh, just so that we don't uh, hit that problem. Well, let's say we're totally done. This is my final project. Everything's amazing. I love it. Uh, you go up here to the top right hand corner to share um, a couple different things I would suggest exporting it right to YouTube because that is it'll save you a couple steps um, a YouTube account is the same as the account you have for blogger just to log in for my purposes just I'm gonna save it right to the computer also not a bad idea to have a copy of it uh, you'll get the different types of resolution the higher the better um, you should always give it a description um, a tag you don't necessarily need to uh, if this were just like an audio podcast I just only want to export the audio I could do it that way but this is audio and video quality um, you could do best medium high you can see there it changes the size so generally you'd always want to go with the best quality but if you're thinking of like you have a really small network to upload you might have to go something a little bit smaller. So 100 megabytes, that's not too uh, too bad at all. Uh, compression, you can go better quality or faster. That would be fine. I can just hit next. <clears throat> It'll ask me where I want to save it. Always know where you're saving things and it should be backed up. Uh, so for example, if I put it on my desktop, I should also put it on a thumb drive or you should have your folder that says your NSID, something like that. Your uh, maybe not iCloud Drive, uh, but I'm going to put it on my desktop. Hit next. Save. And you're going to see this little wheel. This is its progress, its, its activity. So it's starting to export it, and it might take a few minutes. Um, so don't close your computer. Don't shut anything down. Don't close this. Um, it's basically trying to write your video. I'm going to show you the other option of going right to YouTube. Because I've already logged in, it knows. Um, I could change its description, so I would write assignment number 
for um, shot types and camera angles for ETAD 402 next oh uh, sorry one thing make sure it is public or unlisted do not put it to private because then I can't view it um, unlisted is good because then nobody can find it unless you send them the link and you will be posting a link to this video on your blog I'm gonna go over that right now too so I'm gonna hit next uh, basically says you're not doing anything with copyright publish <clears throat> And it's going to go in there as well. Um, one thing I'm going to show you how to pull in um, the video clip from Blogger. So I'm just going to go to Blogger here. Just give me a second. The one thing about having Blogger and YouTube both connected is that it makes it really easy to post your videos. Um, <clears throat> 402 blog, I'm gonna make a post. And I could post um, shot types, assignment. It's really slow because uh, the computer is doing a lot of heavy computer work trying to export these videos. Uh, again, you should be writing as much as possible. This is where I would talk about anything extra you did. That's where I say, like, for some of these assignments, it's really hard to grade you because, uh, A, it's subjective, but B, I don't necessarily know exactly everything that you've done. I may not know that you have um, edited every clip or color matched every clip or uh, special, like, Ken Burns effects. I might be able to tell that one, but uh, this is where you would tell me everything you can about the assignment that way I can get you the most accurate grade um, for the video what I would do is I just click this little video import a video <clears throat> you can grab one from YouTube or if if I had my video done on my desktop I can just drag it and drop it but I find it easier uh, you don't even need to use this one because this is searching any video but if I go to my YouTube videos Let's pretend it was this video, which I made for a, a teacher in the States. Um, again, once mine is, well, the reason why you don't see the one I just did is because it's not done exporting here. It's still going here. Once that's done, I usually give it like three or four minutes and then it pops up in this list. And I would hit select and it pops up there. For some reason, I, it always goes center. Generally, if you click on it, you can have the option to move it to the left or make it bigger and hit publish. Uh, I'm not going to do that just because I don't want this video published there. Um, but again, that's that's the entire process and that's how to add titles. That's uh, a really decent intro. Um, and whenever you open up iMovie movie again, it'll bring you right to this. Uh, so if you want to do another project, you would just simply go back in, hit OK, hit new. Uh, another program you could try, I don't know if that computer, these computers at the university have Final Cut Pro, they used to, but it, it's very similar and it's it's basically a way more advanced version. This is kind of like the intro to video, this is just getting started, very easy for kind of beginners and students, especially in elementary, but I would say once people have gotten um, ideas of like how to actually do things you can get a little bit more complicated so this looks similar and actually this was a project I just did to, to shoot what I was doing in the classroom uh, very similar you have your viewers your editors your timelines uh, it basically just allows you to do a little bit more advanced uh, you can see I have quite a few clips you can cut up clips a little bit better add titles uh, transitions um, pretty much everything you could do but it's just again just a little bit more advanced a little bit of effect there I sped up some clips majorly so just some different things that you couldn't do in iMovie um, I was 
filtering and playing with background noise and hum removal, lots of different things. So again, it's just more of an advanced program. Another one I know your computers at the university have is Adobe. Oh, Premiere Pro. I don't know if I have it on mine. Yep. Oh, no, I have to install it. So you have Premiere Pro, which is a uh, very advanced. It's basically another version of like Final Cut Pro, a very advanced version. Again, you don't need to do that, um, but you totally can if you want. Um, if you're thinking you might do a lot of video, you're, you might learn very quickly that uh, iMovie might not cut it for you anymore, or it could be the best thing ever and it could suit all your needs. So it t totally depends on you. The theater is perfect. Um, the theater is where it actually, anytime you save uh, a video, it'll save in your theater. So you can actually uh, look at them later on. It kind of, it's a nice place to organize it. Here's a whole like series of videos I did for my students um, for putting together the guitars in our guitar project. And, uh, I was just trying to actually change that one. Um, I'll turn down the audio just a bit. And you can see these just have a, a similar feel. I was using a template and just kind of made it work for me. And uh, yeah. So again, that is absolutely everything you need to know for recording and editing and iMovie and adding your titles. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.